part two. This is just the colorization of the patch, uh, just going over using uh, Anglis paints. Uh, they're uh, an acrylic. This is a what they call a uh, a sampler. Yeah, sampler kit. It's like twenty some odd bucks. It's one of the, if you're doing anything with uh, leather paints and you want to you know get some really cool colors out of this. I cannot recommend this paint um, more than I already do. Um, I've used the EcoFlow, not as good. Um, I've used uh, several other types of paint. This acrylic paint is just great on leather. It really holds up. It blends well. I can. I wish that I could uh, recommend this more. Uh, so I really, you know, can't say anything good that uh, a lot of people don't already know about it, so I just keep telling people the same thing. It's it's great paint, and it's if you've ever seen any videos where people are painting uh, uh, old sneakers and redoing them, this is the paint they use. They use an airbrush. Um, my airbrush in this case probably would have not really done me any benefit, uh, but that is one of my projects someday to, to uh, repaint a pair of sneakers just for the fun of, of doing it, just to learn the process. Um, and maybe I could make a really cool uh, pair of sneakers. I don't know. Uh, I guess it's leather related, so I guess I could do it. So uh, pretty much in this video right here uh, segment, you're just gonna see me um, blending the colors, getting the delineation in, and just getting it looking good. Uh, and then I'll come back and when we get a little further in, I'll explain what I'm doing and why I've done it. And hopefully that uh, will be a benefit. part and we're ready to seal just putting little touches on the purple and stuff in um, the next uh, image is going to be the glamour shot I am not sure why that picture looks as pixelated as it is I don't know if that'll fix in the render I'm not sure at all so now I'm gonna put the uh, eco flow some eco flow or sorry some eco flow products are great. I think that you just have to kind of cherry pick what works for you or not. And I really like EcoFlow. Uh, it's a water-based product. Uh, it seems to work 
really well for a lot of my applications. Other applications, um, not so, doesn't always work out. So just let it dry. I really push um, my projects. Probably I could let them dry a little longer, but um, I just want to, you know, get moving on them. Got the inspiration. I cannot recommend um, more to people to use the box cutting knife and blades. Uh, just a lot cheaper. I've used other blades before. Cost me a lot of money. Uh, this is Phoebe's uh, alcohol based black die or US Marine Corps black. Uh, really great die, Phoebe's. Uh, just don't smoke or you know light a flame around it. It is flammable. Uh, it does smell a little stronger, but it's a really good die. Uh, you have to put in several layers of it to get the penetration, but uh, cannot go wrong with Phoebe. They don't have all of the colors, but uh, there's lots of color choices. This is a stitch groover, and that's just dropping a little, like, you know, a little trough so that I can stitch into it. And then the next tool you see is closing it up. It's a, it's a kind of a manual groover, and I'm just going through and cleaning up the, uh, the edges. And I didn't run the black back over it because I knew that it was going to be using brown thread. So now, this is the highlight. This is the, uh, basically, it falls into the cracks and the grooves and, and all the little parts there, and which helps gives the leather that, this is Saddle Tan. It's a water-based program, pro, uh, sorry, product again by EcoFlow. Uh, product as you can see me putting on more coats you can layer it you can actually build it up put layers on and then wipe those layers off and get a real modeled effect uh, weathering it's great it's it's again it's another great product that uh, um, if you want to get effects out of it you really want to use it as a paint and so now I'm just using a, a burnishing stick just helps make the edges look a little more um, smooth and a little more finished. Um, I just used a little bit of, uh, of a sponge, wet sponge to go around the perimeter. Here we're just, I'm getting the, uh, the bag so I can get the location. Already talked to the client and the client said, yeah, I want it right here, right above that diamond. So I did. Just got a place, get a little bit of white glue. Um, just make it a bond point and then drop it on, put a book on it, put an anvil on it, and then you got the glamour shots. And you can see the, the, the stitch groove. I don't think the picture is really that great. Oh, now we got the sewing machine. The black thread for the gray thread ran up a bobbin, and I'm just using this, my, uh, my stitch. This is like a, a nine ounce piece of leather that I use just to make sure that all my stitching is nice and tight and make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to be working. I haven't bent a needle. Um, grabbing the bag. Sorry, I got the yawns real bad. Um, got the bag, moved my uh, GoPro <laughs> with the bag. That was always really great. I got to put a hard mount in over here. So just getting the needle started. Um, the sewing machine that I'm using has a uh, it has a, a controls for lifting the the foot and also for controlling the motor. Um, I use the I kind of like play with it a bit to make sure that I can get the needle right where I want it. Um, this is a fairly new machine for me. Um, I had it for about oh about a year now, and about six months of that um, I was trying to calibrate it because uh, I did something stupid. And you know, when you're learning a new machine, it's usually user error that causes the problem and not the machine itself. So I had uh, the local technician that I bought the machine from came out 
and he worked on it. I got a lot of practice the last Phoenix Comic Con. The uh, all the bags that I had for the con, um, I uh, did a lot of that stitching. The last part uh, during the con, just before the con, and during the con, I did a lot of stitching, and uh, so I got much better at it. And I've been making my own bags now, and uh, it's a uh, it's a really durable machine. Uh, can go through some serious leather. Uh, but in this case, I'm not even using a leather needle. I'm just using a, a standard fabric needle. I find that uh, it makes a much cleaner hole on the back side, and it goes right through the leather no problem. And you're seeing I'm going to knock off my uh, <laughs> my clothespin holders there. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this went together fairly smooth for right to the end. Uh, right at the end, I'm in the second to last turn and I get right up to the last corner and I did something I don't know what it was maybe I crossed a stitch or something uh, and I I jammed it up so I had to pull it out and uh, reset that corner and do a couple back stitches to make sure that it, everything was locked in and it was right at the end I mean I could just see where I was gonna match up the holes and everything was gonna be good and you see right here jammed it up uh, just move it back and forth and it wouldn't break f free I probably could have moved it but uh, I just was not gonna risk the bag or risk the machine I think this is how I uh, messed up my machine before so I just pull the threads tight make sure everything's in good shape and uh, you know torch it a little bit get it cleaned up and uh, then get it back in the machine and uh, match up those holes so that I can make sure that it goes right where it needs to go. So here's the finished bag. Um, man, those, I hope these pictures render up a little better with the, uh, with the finished. Uh, I think I'm, well, and it'll be nice too. I'll be getting a new camera soon. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me comments in the, uh, in the comment box. Thanks.